Afternoon, I'm, um, I'm Mark Learmonth, Caledonia's uh, Chief Executive, and I'd like to welcome you to this uh, presentation of um, Caledonia's results for the first quarter of 2023. I'm joined by um, Dana Roots, our Chief Operating Officer, uh, Victor Gopari, uh, who joined us from Bilbo's, he's an Executive Director of, um, of Caledonia, by Chester Goodburn, our CFO, and uh, by Camilla, Camilla Horsfall, our Vice President of Investor Relations, and also Morris Mason, our Vice President of, um, of Corporate Development. We're going to run through a, um, a slide deck which hopefully addresses the, the main issues. The slide deck will be made available on our website uh, immediately after this, um, after this presentation. There is an opportunity for questions at the end of the, um, at the, end of the presentation. Uh, you can either do that by typing questions in or by um, or by doing it sort of traditionally using your mouth. Uh, I would I would um, I would encourage you to do them verbally because typed questions always leave leave gaps in understanding and nuancing. And so I think I think I always feel very uncomfortable uh, responding to uh, typed questions because I don't I don't always know if we've answered the question properly. Um, so with that, I'd like to um, I'd like to start the presentation. Um, Camilla's driving this. We seem to be on the um, summary page. So production for the um, production for the quarter, as previously announced, was um, just over sixteen thousand one hundred ounces. So substantially down from the eighteen and a half thousand ounces that we achieved in the first quarter of twenty twenty two. Average gold price virtually um, unchanged, and so the the fall in revenue was was pretty much due to um, to um, lower production and lower sales, movements in working capital. Gross profit substantially down from nearly 17 million to just less than $6 million. And the, um, the net loss or profit attributable to shareholders went from a $6 million profit in the first quarter of 2022 to a $5 million loss in, in this quarter just finished, correspondingly a substantial reduction in, um, in earnings and, and loss per share. Dividend maintained at 14 cents. And a very substantial, instead of having a $10 million inflow from operating activities, in this quarter we had about a million dollar outflow. Can you move down, Camilla? Right, so in terms of overview, this, it should be borne in mind, this is the first quarter that reflects our ownership of Bilbo's. And in any event, that was going to have a short-term negative effect on our financial performance because uh, it was always intended that we would start work at Bilbo's on the um, on the oxide stripping material to to expose the oxide material and then only start production towards the very end of the quarter so that was always intended I think the difference now is that um, we've been disappointed with the the grade in some of the target mining areas and so we've we've had to revise our guidance for that and Victor will talk in a bit more detail about uh, the difficulties at um, at uh, Bilbo's oxides a blanket production was um, was was below plan, uh, mainly due to tons, um, and, we, and that was due to um, equipment failures and logis logistical issues. Again, which Dana can talk about in a moment. There is evidence of some some imp improvement in um, in production in uh, April, where on a on a daily basis we achieved about eighty thousand ounces um, uh, per annum on an annual on an annualized rate. Operating costs of blanket were um, higher than expected, and that's mainly due to uh, increased uh, higher than expected uh, electricity consumption, and that was uh, also affected by an increase in the tariff that we pay for uh, for grid power. Uh, the solar plant was commissioned in, in in the quarter, and that generates slightly more power than we'd expected. And we are seeing a benefit from that, um, both in terms of a reduce in the in the weighted average cost of um, of power, and also it displaces quite expensive um, of diesel. We started work on the feasibility study for the main Bilbo's sulfide project, which we can talk about in a moment. Uh, we, we completed a fundraise in Europe, South Africa and Zimbabwe, which raised a total of about 16.6 million. Most of that was received in the quarter and then about $5 million was received immediately after the end of the quarter. And we stand behind our production guidance of blanket for the year uh, of between 75 and 80,000 ounces, and also it's not on here, but we will mention it later. We also reiterate our uh, online cost guidance for um, for blanket. So I'll ask Donna to talk about this in a bit more detail. But if you look at the top graph in particular, the light, the light line, the sort of light orange line that shows uh, tons, and you can see that the tons was 
was substantially down um, in the quarter. Um, and grade was also down somewhat. The, the, the lower grade was, as it was broadly as expected. We had expected the grade to be lower in the quarter, and so we weren't particularly disappointed by that. But the real, the real factor that drove disappointing production was, um, was tons. So perhaps I'd like to ask uh, Dana to put a bit more context on, um, on why the tons were lower than we'd expected. Dana, could you help us? Right. Uh, normally in the first quarter, you've got, you, you struggle to get going after Christmas and especially when last year we showed a buildup of, of another 20% to achieve our um, 80,000 ounces. So, um, but then added to that, we had our main uh, winder at four shaft that failed on us and it was electrical motor commuter that failed, which resulted in the, in the motor slip ring gear brushes prematurely failing. Um, and we, uh, during, during the COVID e uh, era, we got um, uh, uh, spares in, we had critical spares, but um, we couldn't get it from the, the, the preferred company. And when we installed these, these, uh, these brushes, um, we picked up issues with the uh, winder where it, where it kept, kept on, on tripping. Then we had to rush out and have other brushes make, made up which we then installed. And when we installed it, um, then we, we had some communication problems for, with our electronic cards. And, um, you know, that, that, that cost us a couple of days to sort that out. Um, and, and the net result was that we, we lost 12 days of, 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 of production uh, due to that because we couldn't waste them. At the same time, at our new shaft, central shaft, we had, a, we, had a, we had an ore pot that was hanging up um, and um, so, so it was a, a perfect storm at both shafts that we couldn't waste. Um, now, part of this is, is a question was asked before this. Um, how do we know this, this won't happen again? Now, the, the one that four shaft has been operating for the last 14 years. And it's the first time in 14 years that we picked up uh, an issue like this. So it was unfortunate. It's not something that happens every day. And um, with 50% um, of towards the end of the year, 50% of our production that will come via central shaft, um, the, the uh, uh, pressure on, on, on four shaft will, will just start getting less and less and less. And, and, and you know, um, going forward, especially from the second half of the year, we will basically have four shaft as 50% spare where well, and, and, and central shaft will only run at about a third of its capacity. So it will put us in a much better position if something similar would happen. Okay, um, look, if anyone's got any further questions on that, we can come back to that towards the, um, you know, after, after we've been through the formal presentation. Can we, can we just move on and talk about, um, and talk about Bilbo's? Um, I just like to put the Bilbo's thing, the Bilbo's in, in contact. We bought Bilbo's entirely predicated on a, a large, over, over 2 million ounce uh, sulfide resource at a grade of over two grams a ton. So it's a large high grade resource. Uh, and there's nothing, nothing has happened at Bilbo's to dent our confidence in that resource. <clears throat> the Oxide project was purely a, a small short-term project uh, over the course of the next two and a half years, during which period we might have produced about 50,000 ounces, primarily, primarily to generate cash so that we can maintain the operating integrity of the existing Bilbo's business, which employs about 150 people, pending the, the commencement of, of work on the main sulfide project. Now, as, Vic, as, Victor, as Victor's going to explain, um, we went off, we did the pre-stripping in the quarter to uh, expose the first, the first target mining area. At that area, the grades were uh, disappointing, so we've had to move to um, other areas. Um, and our approach, our approach to build the Bilbo's oxide project is that we are now engaged in our own um, quite intensive um, evaluation drilling of the next target areas before we commit to uh, waste stripping so that we can improve the confidence level of those target, target mining areas before we start expending money. By the end of this month, so by the end of May, we will have completed that evaluation drilling, which will give us a runway out to the end of um, September. And then over the course of from, from June and July onwards, we'll then do further drilling to extend that, um, that mine life horizon for a longer period of time. 
So at this stage, whilst we've, 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 we have withdrawn guidance for the Bilbo's Oxide project, at this stage, we believe it will it will broadly wash its face, it might make a small, a small operating contribution. At the same time, we're also now beginning to evaluate um, the ability to identify um, oxide resources at the uh, Matapa property, which is immediately adjacent, right next door to Bilbo's, which we could uh, use to extend the life of that mining of that, of that oxide mining operation. Um, but what I'd like Victor specifically to address is a question that we received uh, by email in the last day or so, which is to specifically address the issue as to you know, how can people be confident that the difficulties we've, we've found on the oxide resource don't read across to the sulfide resource. Victor, can you just um, comment on that, please? Uh, thank you, Mark. Uh, the companies are very confident on the sulfide mineral resource estimates. The mineral resource estimates were estimated following extensive drilling amounting to just over 93,000 uh, meters over four distinct phases. The drilling for sulfide resource is considered to be all new drilling. And the initial drilling was uh, commenced in 1994 and managed by Anglo-American. So that was 17,000 meters of drilling out of the 93,000. So the balance of that is drilling, which actually started from 2010. So we are fairly confident about that drilling because that drilling was actually done in compliance with uh, some guidelines. Uh, the rock chips and cores from the last three phases of sulfide resource drilling is being kept at the mine core yard for reference. The mineral resource estimates were compiled in compliance with the revision, with the definitions and guidelines for the reporting of uh, exploration information, mineral resources, and mineral reserves in Canada. That is the CIM standards on mineral resources and reserves, definition and guidelines 2014. These mineral resource estimates also adhere to the rules and policies of uh, the National Instrument 43101 standards of disclosure for mineral projects, Form 43101F1 and companion policy 43101 CP. The resource classification follows the Canadian Institute of Mining and Metallurgy and Petroleum's definition for classification of inferred, indicated, and measured mineral resources. Classification of the estimated resources use the checklist approach where various criteria were assessed to determine the confidence and continuing of geology and grades. The checklist included the following, data quality and integrity, data spacing for confidence in geological interpretations and grade interpolation, confidence in the geological interpretation from a regional and local perspective, and how that interpretation in influences the controls for sulfide mineralization. Uh, then geostatistical confidence in grade continuity and geostatistical parameters such as Krieging variance, Krieging efficiency, and search distances to measure the relative confidence in the block estimates. Those estimates were checked by an independent CP and deemed compliant and accurate for the purpose of the feasibility study. We are confident that our due diligence on the Bilbo sulfide project was done properly and we stand by our decision on Bilbo's sulfide project. Good, um, thank you for that. So I think I think the, the critical point is that the, the, the work that had been done on the disappointing oxide project was work that had been done many many years previously not by the existing vendor not by the not by the, the bilbo's vendors it was it was old information that had been had been um uh, had been inherited um but again i just want to put this oxide thing into into context again we can come back to that with any further questions if anybody um wants to raise them later on can i can i, I ask sorry I victor, suppose, sorry, victor I suppose, not... Mark. yeah I suppose what I can also just add is that when Caledonia was purchasing Bilbo's, the transaction was entirely based on the sulfide project. Yeah. The oxide were not part of that valuation. And it was like a, a bonus in terms of uh, the stripping because you were always going to come up with the oxides as you strip and you treat them with the existing, uh, on the existing uh, hip yeah. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's fair to say that our... Um... Our, our economic evaluation of, uh, of Bilbo's was, was based purely on the uh, sulfides and, and nothing on the oxides at all. So the oxides, as Victor says, was a, was a cheeky freebie. 
um, which was good for us, but less good for Victor as a vendor. Um, okay, we can come back to we can come back to uh, Bilbo's again if anybody's got any further questions. But can I ask uh, Chester to just just can, canter through the, um, the financials, if you could please, Chester? Sure. Thanks, Mark. Um, it's put the Brock and Law statement being uh, existing flagship operation as a blanket. I mean, we started up uh, Oxide Project um, for Bilbo's. It was positive to see that in a challenging quarter while introducing the new Oxide startup operation, blanket mine remained profitable, cash generative, and the core of our business remained um, robust with all these uncontrollable challenges we encountered at, at Blanket. Further, I was delighted to see production of Blanket in April and May, a pretend Blanket daily production running rate to achieve the uh, production of, of between 77,000 and 80,000 ounces uh, per annum. Current production rate profitability is also expected to improve in 2023. Oxide production came late on the cost early in quarter, and as shared by Victor, some um, will be shared by Victor is, is planned to be cash neutral and cover costs and further increase our group profitability levels when we achieve this. Blanket mine, as you can see at the bottom, contributes $5 million of accounting and profits in Q1. And when non cash items <clears throat> and working capital fluctuations are ignored, generated approximately eight million dollars um, to our business and that shows that blank so chester chester can i just interject that can so the critical thing here is that clearly rev revenues down uh from 35 million to 29 29 million because of lower production but production costs up from 13.7 million to 16.1 can um between you and um you and donna could you just explain the the reason why that's gone up primarily it is electricity could you just talk about that a bit Sure. Um, Donna, do you want to start or should I? Okay, looking at the, the, the production numbers, it, it follows next. Um, the electricity costs that the blanket increased, um, that's partly due to additional usage and uh, due to rate increases and experience in the quarter. We've um, subsequent to the quarter engaged um, in, in contract with the IUG, that's a consortium that imports power to Zimbabwe, that gives us a lower rate, and we expect to um, get a benefit of approximately $450,000 per quarter. That's not included in those numbers. You'll see that coming forward. Um, we're also encouraging um, further initiatives by our operators to look at our kilowatt hours usage as we move more towards the central shop to obtain our production and waste to waste. Our list uh, towards um, using the the four shop and JFO shop to reduce our kilowatt hour usage. Um, what is not evident now, electricity costs on an online cost basis, about four hundred thirty four thousand dollars that um, that we've saved um, by starting up for the solar project, and we're quite happy to see that that's uh, operating slightly better than what we expected. Further. I don't know, Dana, if you want to expand to on, on the electricity side. Yeah, I, th I think it's important to note as well that uh, when we did the budget um, with uh, what happened in Ukraine, uh, dollar inflation, as we know, um, or inflation worldwide went up. So our labor costs went up as well, where before we, we could, could get away with a, sort of a very stable uh, working cost as far as labor is concerned. So we, we gave our uh, uh, people a... Uh, uh, a four four and a half percent increase, and then um, added to that uh, in the upper section, the one section, we had some some uh, slabbing where we 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 had a uh, a parting in some of the slopes that we we tried to undercut and it just kept on coming down, and um, those big rocks blocked our uh, draw points, and uh, we went through a period where we had to do a lot of secondary blasting, which also cost us as far as explosives is concerned. So um, that also contributed to, uh, to the higher cost. <clears throat> and then- um, to, add, uh, to labor, Donna, um, we can see higher um, job creation levels if you compare it to the, the prior quarter. Um, that's due to ramp up of, of the ounces. So it's not evident in the in quarter one, 2022. Uh, we've added um, some to our labor force uh, and, and that helps us to, um, to increase and maintain to the 
Um, if we can move on to the next slide. You can see the production costs. Um, labor and salary has went up, as, as we just said. Um, it's also encouraging to see that we, we are paying our labor force a fair wage. Um, that's um, that's um, good to see how we're paying them 100% in US dollars. Uh, further electricity we've spoken about, we are planning to reduce that electricity cost with um, better rates of paying from the energy initiatives implemented with the uh, IEG, and we have seen that realized in, in April. And uh, all those oxides cost, we are looking at um, turning those, those operations around and becoming cash neutral. Can we move to the next just before, slide? Yeah, Chester, before you move on, there was a question. This isn't this isn't purely this isn't really about the financials, but as you mentioned, the IEUG, the IEUG is um, is the Intensive Energy User Group, which is an initiative that's been set up um, under the auspices of the president. And the the aim of the IEUG is to allow large scale users such as Blanket to import power directly from um, outside the country. Uh, so usually Zambia or Mozambique, um, and then wheel that power through the Zimbabwe grid to you know to us. We started using that in um, in April, the first of April. Uh, we are seeing a reduction in tariff. Um, at this stage, I don't know if we're seeing any benefit in terms of a reduction in uh, load shedding. Dana, can you have you got a view as to whether we, we're incurring less load shedding so far? Yeah, we 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 should actually start seeing it from next month more. Um, but, but the yeah. question, the question, what the, the question was specifically. Yeah, it doesn't. But even if you're getting juice coming in from Zambia or um, or Mozambique, you're still at risk with the, with the Zimbabwe grid. Yes, we are, um, and we, you know, we we can't we can't um, you know we we can't fix the Zimbabwe grid. Um, it is it is fair to say that the the approach the Zimbabwean the Zimbabwean authorities is generally to prefer industrial users to domestic users. Unlike in South Africa, but Dana, could you could you just comment on the new line, the, the Mshabezi line that we've built? Does yeah. that we we with with Zesa we upgraded the uh, extra line of country, which gives give us an extra six uh, MBA, um, and that uh, that line we we are busy connecting directly to our uh, winders at at, um, at Central Shelf, um, and then apart from that. Um, you know, we've got the solar farm and then we've got 16 MVA of, of generator um, capacity. So um, I, we, again, we've got a lot more flexibility and uh, to deal with, with uh, load shedding. Um, but if I look back at a question that was asked, Mark, there's nothing in the contract that, that says that um, ZESA are allowed to interrupt uh, or take the power that we, we import. So there's nothing like that. And, yeah, but, and, but the, I think the question was more generally, you know, yeah. if the grid collapses, the grid collapses, there's nothing we can do about it. Yeah. Um, but, well, so whilst just let, well, let's just deal with this electricity situation whilst whilst we're talking about it. Um, Victor, could you could you just give a comment as to where Bilbo's is in terms of the grid um, and how Bilbo's is, is, is situated in terms of, um, you know, its, it's grid supply? Okay, Bilbo's is more towards the north. At the moment, uh, in terms of the sulfide project, we've budgeted to build uh, a new line, a direct line, uh, coming from uh, a substation. I think that line will be about 75 kilometers or so. However, in the last uh, two years or so, uh, the Zimbabwe Electricity Transmission and Distribution Company has been building a line which is coming direct from Wange Power Station. As you know, at Wangi Power Station, they've constructed uh, uh, two generators, which will generate about uh, 600 megawatts. So that line passes very close to the build operations. So we've got a, a chance, an alternative, to actually connect from a much closer line. Plus also electricity uh, supply, uh, which is closer to Wange, is much more reliable maybe than compared to the south of the country. Yeah. So I think I think the upshot is that Blanket's not geographically not in a great place for uh, for uh, for the grid. Bilbo's 
is much better positioned for the grid than, uh, than blankets. Sorry, so we had a bit of a departure on, on electricity, but I just thought whilst we're talking about electricity, we should we should deal with it. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you, Chester. Do you want to um, do you want to continue? Sure. <laughs> if we could turn uh, the page, please. Administrative expenses um, increased due to a once of cost of uh, approximately 3.1 million paid to advisors on acquiring Bilbo's uh, sulfides project. Uh, the Bilbo sulfide project is well worth the spendings. Uh, and uh, it's also important to note that it's a once of cost. Um, and Bilbo is uh, expected to be highly profitable and much bigger than blanket. Other than advisory fees, we had small. Increases in our uptick and travel post COVID 19 lockdowns. And uh, other than that, it's very comparable to, to the previous quarter. We can move on to cost balance. Here you can see a large portion of our, our price um, was due to the, the Oxide startup, and uh, that affected our online cost. Uh, we plan to turn the Oxide cash neutral. Energy savings, as we mentioned, through the IMG is expected to reduce our, our energy costs and higher production levels in future quarters that we have seen realized both quarters and expected to lower the online costs for the remainder of 2023. The online production cost guidance blanket, current kind of crux of our business, is set at $770 per ounce to $815 per ounce and ranks amongst the, the low end of the spectrum when compared to our industry peers. We move on to, to tax. Our effective tax rate was high in the quarter uh, due to the oxide operating costs um, and acquisition fees totaling about. $6.4 million uh, being all being non-deductible. Um, these costs are new expense for, for tax purposes. And the future benefit of these assets losses are not reflected in the numbers. In the future, we'll be able to reap the benefit of the assets losses in the oxide project as it been profitable. cash flow. Bankit uh, said uh, contributed approximately $8 million to the cash flows before working capital swings. And uh, this proves uh, Blanket remains strong and is expected to improve throughout this year. Um, this is reduced, the once of advisory, reduced by the once of advisory fees and the completion of the Volpo sulfides project and the negative cash flows um, of the oxide startup operation. We've issued solar bonds at the value of seven million. Four and a half million of that was issued before quarter one end and raised uh, 16 million in equity raises, of which uh, 5 million was not reflected in these numbers. The bullion receivable, uh, outstanding at quarter end of 6.7 million, that was received post quarter end. And together, these mentioned cash flows represent approximately 14 million uh, that derived in our bank account post quarter end. Further normalization of our bullion receivable due to um, a new sales mechanism um, should, uh, should improve our deliveries and our cash flows and make our deliveries less lumpy, along with the cash flows that follows that. Moving on to the balance sheet. Non-current non asset um, included approximately $70 million due to the acquisition of the Solfice project. Current assets increased uh, due to the increased cash availability in the group. And current liabilities include approximately 4 million of liabilities not settled in cash. Uh, it was settled by the issuance of shares uh, post yen and the deferred consideration for all bulbos. And four and a half million dollars of liabilities was acquired in the Bilbo's deal. I'm also excited to share. Um, there goes my power. Apologies. Um, but um, we expect to make a huge dent in our overdraft uh, facilities by the end of, of 2023 when we pay off the large portion of our overdrafts. Um, this is at the current production guidance levels. Our current uh, gold price. We can move over to, to cash. A 
on the slide, the uptick in our net cash position is evident um, as we've improved the production blanket. You can see the trend is continuing in May, uh, giving an indication of the production fire has turned that blanket. Further, we expected uh, we are expected to reduce our borrowings by year end, and uh, our transfers of cash from Zimbabwe continued normally. This enabled us to maintain the dividend of, of 14 shares, is 14 cents per share per quarter, and um, and pay all our related expenditures outside of Zimbabwe. Yeah, Chester, Chester, just just pause. So one of the things that's changed. In the course of the last year or so is the availability in Zimbabwe of dollar denominated debt. Uh, so on the basis that it's available, we choose to take it. Um, and the, the guiding principle behind this is we, do, we don't like to leave uh, dollars sitting in Zimbabwe. And if we can borrow in dollars in Zimbabwe, um, we will do. Uh, but as Chester said, over the course of the year, we do, we do make provision to repay about $10 million of these overdrafts. Um, but you know, if they continue to be available, we'll we'll keep them, we'll keep them in, in situ and use the cash elsewhere in the business. Um, it's just worth noting that. So I just want to be absolutely clear. We are not, we are not accumulating a pile of local, local Zimbabwe dollars for which we have no use and which we can't remit. I think that that very much wraps up the the finance section. Should we move over to, to other matters? Yeah, just just a few a few other matters. Just on the on the bill, but on the on the sulfides, we started we started working earnest on that in in April. Um, initially, we're doing a series of of high level studies, three high level studies, which our character the, the overall objective is to achieve a production rate of one hundred and seventy thousand ounces a year. Uh, there are various ways to do that, and so we're looking at three approaches. The first I'd call like a hop, skip, and a jump. Uh, the second would be a hop and a skip, and the third one would just be a jump straight to um, 170,000 ounces a year. And so what we're doing is we're balancing um, the slower growth with a, a more achievable funding profile. Um, so it'll be slower growth, but, but by minimizing dilution. And, the, and the, the, the overall objective is to identify the outcome that, that maximizes the uplift in NPV per share. Um, so my expectation would be that the the big the single jump project will probably give the best return, but that may it may may be difficult in terms of funding. So maybe we have to do a, a, a two stage process. But we, at this stage, we're looking at um, all realistic options, and then we'll we'll identify the um, the one that works best. And the idea, I think, at this stage is that we should hopefully have got the the bankable feasibility study completed. Um, Within the first quarter of um, of next year, so that's very so that's very much ongoing. Um, as Chester mentioned, we have started the direct export of gold. In 2022, the regulations changed such that there's a policy announcement which allowed people like us to uh, export gold ourselves. But the policy announcement it took a long time, about six months, to convert that into um, into practical steps that were acceptable to the Zimbabwean authorities and we were very pleased in early April uh, that we were able to make our first uh, deliveries of gold uh, to a refiner outside Zimbabwe so we export to a refiner in in um, in Dubai so the, the most recent the most recent export was done on Sunday and uh, we received payments on Monday in US dollars directly into our um, Zimbabwe bank accounts so that that considerably improves um, our, uh, our ability, our cash, our, it takes the lumpiness out of our cash flows. And whilst we'd never really had a significant difficulty getting paid by uh, Fidelity, it does address um, a, a sort of long-standing shareholder concern about the credit risk. So that's that's good. Um, <clears throat> we raised equity in March and early April. Uh, it's fair to say we raised about $16 million. Uh, we were surprised at the strength and depth of, of, of demand in Zimbabwe, um, and we're very pleased. We'd, we'd always intended that the Vic Falls listing was really only there to, um, we only secured it to take advantage of, of, of various concessions, but actually it is a real a real living source of, um, of equity on a competitive basis. So that, that's that's a, an issue of, of quite, comes as quite a pleasant surprise to us. Then also, as Chester mentioned, we're um, issuing loan notes uh, from the solar vehicle 
Uh, we did um, four and a half million in the quarter and then about two and a half million immediately after the quarter. And that is that is that is purely to um, sort of this housekeeping to make the, the capital structure of the solar vehicle more more in accordance with um, what it should be for, for a company of that nature, which has got um, a high degree of predictable, very predictable cash flows. Um, so those are the other matters. Then in terms of outlook, we, as I've already said, we uh, reiterate our production guidance for 2023 of 75 to 80,000 ounces. We reiterate Blanket's online guidance uh, between 770 and $850 an ounce. Um, We've, we've, we've withdrawn guidance, both in terms of production and costs for uh, Bilbo's because of the uncertainty. So, and clearly Bilbo, in, in due course, Bilbo's will have an effect on all in sustaining costs, but pretending that Bilbo's didn't exist, uh, we're looking at an all in sustaining cost for, um, for Blanket of between 9.35 and 10.35 um, dollars an ounce. Um, as I mentioned, we expect the, uh, the the final feasibility study for Bilbo's to be completed in, um, in the first quarter of 2024, and we've got board approval now to uh, commence the first phase of a um, of an initial drilling uh, campaign at Matapa. Initially focused on looking for um, oxides to supplement the uh, what, what we're doing at um, at, um, at Bilbo's, but with a, a clear trajectory to um, you know, then then move into the into the sulfides with a view to identifying a a substantial uh, sulfide resource which will complement what we have at um, at, um, at Bilbo's. So I think that that brings the, 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 the formal part of the presentation to an end. Can we open this to, to questions, please? Miller, is, is it are the lines open or? I am just going to allow to talk here. Um, oh, I can see one from, from Damien. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can you he's, hear me? He's been unmuted. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Thank you. Um, thank you for the presentation. Um, yeah, I thought that was very comprehensive. Um, a very good rundown. Um, I suppose a, a couple of questions. Um, I mean, profits. I mean, obviously, revenues and profits seem to have encountered pretty much every possible headwind you can imagine. Um, in this first quarter. Um. Now I can make a judgment on which ones, which ones of the headwinds are kind of one off, which are ongoing. But I was wondering what your perspective was on which headwinds are going to kind of continue throughout the year. Um, production, I, th I think we've got our, um, our hands around production. Um, mm -hmm. Electricity, the, the effect of higher electric, higher than expected electricity consumption will continue for some time until we can rationalise the use of the um, 